Hello again YouTube, this is Fahrenheit646 and welcome back to another Minecraft video. Today I'm going to be showing you 10 different tips that you can use to conserve resources and last longer when playing survival. Now before we get started, there are two things that I need to get out of the way. First, before you go storm in the comments, I did not copy Mumbo Jumbo. I was actually in the process of setting up this world when he came out with his video. Uh, two of the tips I have to share with you today are also in Mumbo Jumbo's video, however all the rest are different. Secondly, there is a secret annotation hidden somewhere in this video. And if you click it, you'll get access to an additional four tips for creative mode. Alright, so without further ado, let's get started. Tip 1. Digging down. Instead of just digging one block straight down like this, dig a 2 by one hole like this, and balance yourself between the blocks. This way, you'll always have a safety block to stand on. Like this, if you uncover lava or a ravine below you. Tip 2. Digging up. Many people will tell you that digging straight up is incredibly dangerous. But, if you carry a torch with you, you can eliminate almost all risk. Before breaking the blocks above your head, place a torch on the block you're standing on. This will break any physics blocks that fall down, so that they don't suffocate you. If you uncover lava, quickly place a block over your head, using the sides of the chute. If you uncover water, swim up to the surface as fast as possible. If you run out of air, just place down your torch. This will create a temporary air pocket to allow you to replenish your breath. Now, the only danger is a mob falling on you. Ah. Tip 3. Zombie Proof Doors Making a zombie proof door is incredibly simple. All you need to do is place your door in the side of the door frame, like this. When you close it, the game will actually see it as open. A zombie will only attempt to break down a closed door, and as a result, they won't even try to break down yours. See? Tip 4. The poor man's fence gate. A good way to conserve resources is to just use one carpet block on top of a fence post as a fence gate. Even though it's possible to jump on the carpet block to get in and out of the enclosure, Minecraft mobs don't see a carpet block as a full block, and so they won't try to escape by jumping over the block, or onto the block. Tip 5. The Efficient Safe Drop For those who don't know, a safe drop is a chute with water held up by a sign near the bottom that cancels out all fall damage, so players don't take any damage when they reach the bottom. Provided you have a silk touch pickaxe, this method will really help you conserve your planks and sticks. Step 1. Use your Silk Touch pickaxe to mine a block of ice. Step 2. While building your chute, plan where you want your water to be. Place a torch two blocks above that spot. Step 3. Once you've tunneled above the torch, place your ice down in the spot where you want the water to be. Now you just have to watch from above until the ice melts. Then you can go down and collect your torch. Tip 6. Advanced PvP. For this tip, I have my brother with me to help illustrate the principle. When engaging in PvP combat in Minecraft, most players will simply charge at each other and spam their left mouse buttons like this. Note the amount of damage I've taken after that fight. Next time you're in a PvP fight, simply try walking towards the enemy and spamming both mouse buttons, like this. Note that I took significantly less damage after this fight. This is because, by spamming both mouse buttons, I'm blocking and striking at the same time, so I'm taking damage slower than my opponent. Tip 7. Apples to Gold. This tip is especially useful for those who play Ultra Hardcore or other game modes that don't have natural regeneration. Try to cut down oak trees in swampland biomes more than other trees if you're trying to stock up on golden apples. 
This is because swampland oak trees tend to have more leaves than oak trees in other biomes, so they're more likely to drop apples. Tip 8. Quick and easy meals. Because flint and steels take so few resources to craft, this tip can help you save big on furnace fuel. Instead of killing animals with your sword and smelting their meat in a furnace, simply light them on fire. Provided they're on fire when they die, they will actually drop the cooked version of their meat. The only downside is you won't get any experience for killing them. Tip 9. Compact storage. Many people think it's impossible to place two chests next to each other, causing them to lose lots of storage space. Check this arrangement out. With this current setup, I lose a total of 108 slots worth of storage space. However, if you alternate the type of chest from regular to trapped, every other space, you'll actually be able to place two double chests directly beside each other, as seen in this setup. And finally, tip 10, into the nether. It is impossible to create an infinite lava source. However, if you're running out of lava and you need obsidian, there is a way to get infinite obsidian. And all you'll need is enough obsidian to create two nether portals and a diamond pickaxe. Step 1. Construct and light a nether portal. Step 2. Take note of the coordinates of a block near the portal. You'll need to come back to it later. An easy way to do this is to write down the coordinates in the chat. Step 3. Go into the nether. Step 4. Walk approximately 100 blocks away from the nether portal you spawned in. Be sure to leave some sort of trail behind you as you do this. Step 5. Construct, light, and enter a second nether portal. When you return to the overworld, you should be in a newly spawned portal. Step 6. Collect all 14 obsidian blocks from the portal. Step 7. Bring up the coordinates you saved and walk back to the first portal you constructed. Now, whenever you need obsidian, simply walk through all three portals in the same order in order to spawn a fourth portal, which you can break, giving you 14 obsidian each time. Alright guys, those are all 10 of the survival tips I have for you. I hope that this video helped you and that you'll use at least one of these techniques in the future. But for now, that's going to have to do it for this video. Thanks for watching. My name's Fahrenheit646. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a rating, leave a comment, subscribe, and add me on Skype. My Skype name is the same as my YouTube username. Once again, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys later. Goodbye.